Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. <laughs> What's up? So it's been a while. Happy New Year. Um, good to see you all. Um, I've been doing great. Been doing good. Um, haven't been making a video for a while, but you know what? I missed you guys, and you know what? There's a lot of information and knowledge and wisdom that the Lord has given me to share with you all, and I want to share it. I'm so excited to share what Jesus has taught me to you guys. Okay, so today I'm going to discuss success. What is success? You know, how do you define success? What makes a successful man? What makes a successful woman? Um, how do you know if you, if and when you've achieved success or if you failed? Okay, now all of us are on different levels in our MGTOW journey, right? You know, maybe your wife left you, maybe your girlfriend left you, um, whatever the case may be, wherever you're at right now in your journey of the red pill, of taking the red pill, you know, and, and, and how you perceive the whole relationship situation and with men and women and marriage and, and just life as a whole. Now that you've taken the red pill, you know, we're all in different, in different places. So, you know, some, some of you may be questioning, well, I don't have a girlfriend. I don't have a wife. Does that mean I'm a failure? You know, cause society kind of tends to give you that stigma, right? Like you failed, you know, if you're not married by this time, you don't have kids, you failed, you know? Um, so is that true? You know, let's examine this for a little bit because society generally looks at a married man and says, well, he's a success. Right. Like if you if you go back in history and look at. Um, pretty much all not I mean, most, but basically almost all of the United States presidents in history have been married men, with the exception of a few. And, you know, I'm not a history major, so I don't know exactly. But I know that the majority, the great majority were married men and because, you know, Americans um, value you know, they, they think that that, you know, that is a trait of a successful man, you know, behind every successful man, there's a woman, right? Or is that how the saying goes? Something like that, you know, but you know, anyway, society will tend to look at a man who's not married and kind of say, eh, not as successful, you know, um, especially now with the MGTOW generation coming through is like, you know, society will say, well, you're not even pursuing marriage anymore. <laughs> you're not even pursuing a wife. That's a double failure, right? Not only did you not get married, but you're not even pursuing it now. Something must be wrong with you. Something must be wrong, right? You've got to be crazy. You know, but being a Christian man, being an, uh, an Israelite that I am, you know, I tend to look to my, my, um, what would you call my role model? Jesus Christ as the perfect role model. Wasn't married. Didn't have kids. You know, and even Jesus said that, um, uh, you know, I had, it, I had it pulled up here. I thought, uh, even Jesus said, you know, that John the Baptist was, was one of the greatest men to have been born of, of women. Right? Something like, I'm paraphrasing. But it, John the Baptist wasn't married. He didn't have a wife and kids. You know, he was poor. And anyways, you know, Jesus said he's a success. <laughs> um, so you have to ask yourself, you know, why do we have it in our heads that a man who's married is more successful? You know? So the way I view it is this. You basically have like two camps of people, right? You have, you have the camp that says, you know, we, we define success as, um, you're wealthy, you're financially stable, um, you, you have a high salary career or, or job, um, your job is stable, uh, you're in good health and good fitness, um, and you have the liberty to just um, do things, take a day off, go on a vacation, you have the liberty to do things that you want to do, whatever it is that you want to do, you can go do it, you have the money to do it, you have the time to do it, you know, you've, you've produced or invented something for society. You've influenced politics. You've changed the world. This makes you a success. You've discovered something new. You, you've invented a new language or a new operating system or something. Success. 
And then you have the other camp of people, which is what the camp I'm in, which defines success as you attend church, you help other people, you help the less fortunate, you give to charity, you don't value material things. Um, you, you, you're a man of your word. You know, when you say something, you do it. Um, you pray to God, you, you know the Bible, you read it, you follow it, and you generally obey the commandments of the Bible. You know, you don't steal, you don't lie, you don't, you don't um, bear false witness against people, you don't lust after your neighbor's wife, things like this. You stay faithful and loyal to the, the person you're with. And, 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 and people in this camp, we define success this way, you know. So if you look at these two camps, you can see how they're almost polar opposites, right? It's almost as if you want to be successful in, in one camp, that means you're going to fail in the other camp and vice versa, right? Like, like you can't be a success in both areas, you know, because they define success differently. So, so when I consider my relationship with my significant other, the who I, whom I was with for a while, you know, I consider this relationship that I was in with with her and I can clearly see how her version of success she was in the first camp you know she thought oh, okay I need a, I need a stable job you know um but she valued more material things where I was just more like you know my version of success is we just obey the commandments of the bible you know if we can do that we're successful and you know um when you look at this you could see that our our versions of success were almost contradictory to each other they were they were competing with each other so i can see that the fact that she broke up with me alone um was to her seen almost as an as a success where i saw it as a failure you know i was like oh well that was a fail <laughs> um because you know now she was able more able to financially or to pursue her financial goals that she set and and as a career and without being bothered of me telling her, hey, look, those goals you've got set are they're really not that big of a deal. They shouldn't be idolized. With To her, they were everything, you know? I was like, oh, these are the definition of success, right? And she looked at me like, oh, following the commandments of the Bible, going to church, yeah, it's not that important. I'm like, are you kidding me? That's everything. That's how we're going to be successful. So you could see why we, we, we didn't make it, you know? We didn't last. Um so she understood that if she were to stay with me, you know, and and live the way that uh, that I proposed under my wor world view of success, you know, she would be considered a failure. You know, her friends would consider her a failure. Her her parents would consider her a failure. Her her teachers at school would consider her a failure. Society as a whole would consider her as a failure. So she was under a lot of pressure. And in short, I would say, you know, she was chasing success in the camp in camp a as like as the americans teach you know um Ameri you know the american dream type of thing and where i was um seeking success in you know in the christian culture like following the commandments going to church things like that you know and ultimately you know i couldn't compete with her parents i couldn't compete with the teachers that were drilling her every day day in day out since she was born you know you know and i come along uh later later in her life you know and and try to say, hey, everything that you've been chasing for for success, that's, listen, that's wrong. Everything your parents are telling you is wrong. Like, it's really hard to um, to deprogram somebody like that. And I tried, and to no avail, I failed. So I, whatever, uh, I press on. Um, if she, you know, if she, in spite of the fact that you know she knew I loved her, you know, um, and knew I would do anything for her you know i literally have taken a bullet for her she had to turn around and point the gun at me and she was actually the one to shoot me right so i'm standing here because i was standing in the way of her success right so i, I can see how she looked at me um being a christian man that i am as somebody who's holding her back from success you know from achieving her material wealth and obtaining what she thought was important um, you know, career and, and, and um, a, a college degree and, and things like that. So, you know, because from my perspective, you know, the culture I'm coming from, the Christian culture, you know, um, 
is is that was seen as a big failure you know when you when you sleep around with other people that's a big huge failure you know when you break up a family a potential family to be right um in in the pursuit of an education or a career you know to me that's a big failure so i'm like to me it doesn't make any sense but to her it makes complete sense because she needs to be successful right in short she valued education over love i would say um and i value love over education but so while she considered that a success i considered a huge failure so my question now is you know which one of us is right who decides you know what what is the success you know because i know a lot of men in the MGTOW community are chasing the same exact thing she was you know they're seeking money they're seeking uh the liberty to do things their own way and uh, on their own time and have um financial freedom and and things like this and and i see a lot of men in the MGTOW community basically chain uh chasing the same things that she was doing and completely um rejecting um my camp of people you know for the same reason she did so this video here is to get you to um question uh what you define as success and, and give you a different perspective out there on you know what success may be you know and and at least if nothing else give you the opportunity to think about it and maybe change if you want to um i would encourage you to if, if that's the way you're doing it but you know obviously i can't twist your arm so at the end of the day how do we define success you know and you know let me read for me the bible this is let's see how god defines success okay now i'm in the book of joshua which is i believe the sixth book of the bible okay so not too far in um, the Lord is instructing Joshua in chapter 1 here, verses 8. Um, the Bible reads, This book, this book, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then, Thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Period. So we can see that the Bible says, you know, if you read the Bible and obey the Bible, that's how you be successful. Funny, I didn't read anything in there about a college degree. I didn't read anything about there about having the liberty to do whatever you want, whenever you want. I didn't read inventing new things. I didn't read getting, oh, I said that, <laughs> I, you know, I didn't read anything about making a lot of money, having a good career, you know? So obviously, you know, the Bible is going to say that. So you have, you know, you have to, you have to ask yourself, you know, If this person in Camp A thinks success is this way, and I think success is this way, and let's say that person goes out and achieves what they're doing, are they a success? If I go out and achieve what I'm doing, am I a success? Are we both a success? Or let's say I go out and achieve what they wanted, but I didn't get what I wanted. Am I still a success? See, so whether... Um, I think if you're going to get involved with anybody romantically or whether it be in business, any situation, you know, I think the first thing that you need to ask and define for each other is, hey, how do you define success? You know, because I'm aiming this way. So if you're aiming a different way, we're not going to be successful unless we have the same goal. Okay. So because, you know, most of these modern women, these uh, feminists, you know, because most modern women are feminists, you know, and they, they usually think of a successful marriage, and I'll use the word marriage lightly, is where the woman is equal with the man, you know, and she makes just as much money as he do, does, and she has the same responsibilities he does, and, and they're both equal in making decisions and things like that. Most women would say, hey, this is a successful marriage when you get to this level, right? And and us as men are, are quickly starting to realize that that's not how 
we want to define successful marriages at all. You know, uh, being involved with a woman like that is, is, is impossible because it's doomed to fail because, you know, we're striving for different goals, right? Now, assuming you're striving for the same goal, you might have a better chance at making that work. Um, but if you're in my camp, you're never going to make that work. <laughs> you're never going to make that work. It's impossible. So, but that's out of the scope of this video, right? Um, basically what's happening is we're living in the hookup culture. We're living in the culture of me too. And, and, and you, and women's power, women's marching and, and, um, and working women, feminist women and, and things like that. Women are wearing pants nowadays and <laughs> instead of, uh, being in the kitchen where they should be, women are trying to alter the traditional roles of women. Okay. But we, we we in the MGTOW community can quickly understand and see that, you know, us men are still, we're still in our traditional role, right? We're still playing, hey, I'm going to work, I'm going to provide for the family. But it's like, these women are saying, no, 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 and things have changed. Now we have the choice whether we want to be traditional or not. It's like, well, men are staying traditional. And and, and here's the thing. Men are, men are starting to realize that if we're going to stay traditional and y'all are not, it's not going to work. You know, we're going to have to change the rules. Either we're going to have to go back to the traditional way or men are going to have to change and become something different. But, but, but that's the thing is men are like, well, we can't, what are we going to do? Be stay at home dads? Like that's not going to work. So how do we make this, how many, how do we make this work? Cause we definitely know this whole equality thing doesn't work. Right. Cause we're not equal. Now that's out of the scope of this video too. So um, basically in the process Women are completely destroying families. They're completely destroying society as we know it because of a result of them chasing this new, defined, successful woman, right? This new career-driven woman, this new educated woman, so-called. So I have to ask myself, is what they are striving for good? Is what I'm striving for good? You know, who's got it right, you know? Do we both got it right? Okay, so because I... I was in a relationship, right? And I was striving for success, meaning I was, my version of success was, hey, we're going to stick together, you know, uh, we're going to obey the commandments, we're going to be loyal and faithful to each other, who cares if we make money, who cares if we get educated, you know, that's secondary, right? That doesn't, that's not going to define our success. What is going to define our success is this book. And what did it say? How are we defining success? If we meditate on the this uh, this book of the law day in and day out, day in and or day and night so because i was in a relationship you know and, and um i was seeking to get married and fulfill all roles as man and woman husband and wife and the next thing i know she's breaking up with me right and i'm wondering why would you do that it's a big failure <laughs> but not to her it's not a big failure to her because her version of success has been corrupted by the propaganda being fed to her by her peers and her teachers and especially her parents, right? So from birth, you know, she's being drilled with this other version of success. So ultimately, based on what standards? Based on my standards, she's a failure, okay? And I'm a success. But based on her standards, I'm a failure and and she's... A, or did I say that right? Based on... <laughs> Based on my standards, she's a failure, I'm a success. But if you if you go on her standards of success, then I'm a failure and she's a success. So who who who's really successful here? You be the judge, you know, who's the judge? Who decides what's right and wrong? Because each of us can convince ourselves that we're striving for something good. Okay? Just like my girlfriend convinced convinced herself that what she's striving for is good. You know, I got to get this education, got to get this career, you know. So how do we become a successful MGTOW? You know, how can we know if our life just isn't a complete failure? You know, because when it's all said and done, we can't take none of this with us. We can't take any of our money that we earn with us, you know. So we can't. What? How do you define success? You know, that's why I'm saying we need to obey the commandments of God. Because at the end of the day... When we get, when we reach the end of our life, we're going to meet God and he's going to say, and he's going to judge us on if we were a success or not based on this book. And, you know, I, I obviously know that that's a religious viewpoint that I hold, but 
if true, that's what it's going to be. So is, how is your faith? You know, how strong is your faith? Are you really going after what God wants? And how would you know that? How would you prove that? You know, maybe you can't. Maybe you just believe it based on faith. You know, my faith is based on this book. Out of the scope of this video. But anyway. What I'm telling you here, guys, is our faith is going to be judged on our, our obedience to God. Not on how much money you make. Not on how much liberty you have to do what you want to do. You know, because none of us are going to take any of this one with us when we die. You know, so God, God is definitely not going to look at these feminist women and give them credit for her degree. You know, well, it, I mean, if it, you know, I'm not saying that a woman shouldn't go get a degree, but if you're if you're going to go out and seek a degree at the expense of of lying and breaking your covenant, breaking your vow that you gave to your man and saying, "Hey, I'd stick with you. I'm going to stick with you. I'm going to be faithful to you," and then the next minute you're like, "Psych." Fool, I'm going to go out and get my degree and throw you in the gutter because you're staying in the way of my success. Okay, God's not going to bless that, you know. So, you know, all these women who are lying and cheating on their man just so they can go out and be successful, what they think is successful, you know. Because my, my girl told me, she said, I'm going to stick with you. I'm going to be with you. Next thing I know, she's gone. Okay, so, you know, God's going to judge her for that. And he, he's not going to say, you go, girl. You did the right thing by breaking your promise to Sean and, and pursuing that degree. And that's never going to happen. So, because here's the thing. We as humans, we can convince ourselves that we're, what we're going for is, is good. And you know what? Maybe maybe it could be good, you know. Like, like for the example, um, universal health care. Let's say that's our goal. Universal. Health. There's nothing wrong with people having access to um, medicine and doctors and healthcare, you know, and hospitals. But the problem is maybe the way you're going about getting that is the wrong way, you know. Um, so, like, let, that's why I'm against it. You know, if 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 you set out to achieve universal health care, but in order to achieve to achieve that, you have to um, force people at gunpoint to pay for it against their will. I don't see the, I don't see how you can say, oh, we successfully, uh, we successfully achieved universal health care. Yeah, by stealing money from people, which pretty much cancels out your success, right? It's a failure. Oh, so in the same way, my situation, my, um, my situation, using my situation as an example, you know, if this woman I was with wanted to achieve a college degree and get a job, you know, okay, maybe that's a good thing to do, but. If it comes at the expense of uh, pretty much taking a giant shit on the vows that you gave to your man and 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 going behind his back and 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 cheating on him and things like that, you know, even if you were to achieve that degree now, you, you didn't do it honorably. You, so you you can't really call that a, a success because you had to lie to get there. You had to cheat. So my point is, you know, sometimes we set goals for ourselves, but the and they may even be good goals. But the way we go about getting those is the wrong way, which so even if we were to get them, it's not a success. OK, so. Um, where am I going here? Uh, yeah, so by the way, um, which we set out to achieve those goals, the process we use to reach it could be completely wrong. OK, so just like my relationship went, you know, her and I didn't disagree that we both wanted to be together. We didn't disagree that we um, we wanted kids um, to be financially secure, that we wanted to be financially secure, that we wanted good health, right? The difference is we, degreed, we disagreed on the process to get there. I was of the opinion and the belief that we need to follow this book. And as long as we follow this book, we'll be successful regardless of whether we have that stuff. And I, I agree that stuff would be nice to have. But it wasn't the end-all, be-all. Following the commandments is the end-all, be-all. Where to her, no, the end-all, be-all is that we get to this stage of financial security and independence and all that stuff. And I was just like, no, that's if we're going to have to break the commandments to get there, it's not going to work. Okay, so, I, you know, I did not want to fall out of breaking the commandments and being out of God's will. Where, you know, she had no problem with that because the Bible meant nothing to her. So, even if it meant breaking up with me, if I was standing in her way of what she considers success, she's going to do that. You know, to her, yeah, I'll just go. I'll just go jump on another man's um, 
Yeah, you get the point. But anyway, so the question is, is how do we know that we're using the correct process now? You know, see, that's why I advocate for the Bible, because it takes all the selfishness out of out of the equation. Because, you know, like I said, we can convince ourselves that we're doing the right thing. You know, because maybe you have something in your heart that you just really want to go after. And, and you can convince yourself that, oh man, as long as I get there, however I get there, that'll be a success. And that's why I love the Bible, because it takes your selfishness out of the equation. You can't be selfish with this book, because it's always going to point north. It's always going to be your compass saying, hey, no, this is the correct way to do it. You're in this, you're, you're, you have a, you have a set way of doing it. I mean, yeah, you have freedom to work within it, but there's certain parameters that are, that are structured there for you to follow, to be a success. You know, there's certain commandments, you know, like, you know, basic stuff like thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not lie, you know, stuff like that, you know? So we have less in our own hearts for things that aren't good because, you know, we're just men. You know, sometimes we get selfish, we get greedy. We want what we want when we want it. Okay. Um, because sometimes we can go to God and we can pray to him and say, God, I want a wife. I want a family. I want some kids. Will you please give it to me? And you know what? God says, you know what? There's nothing wrong with wanting a wife and kids and family. That's something good to want. You know, I'm going to give that to you. But let's say God doesn't give it to us right away. So we, we get impatient and we say, well, God, you're not giving it to me, so I'm going to go out, have to go out there and get it myself. So we take matters into our own hands to go get it. And, and, and if we step out of the parameters of this book and we stop obeying the commandments to get what we want, what we asked of God, he's not going to bless that. You know, he's going to be angry at us. So what I'm saying is we don't want to lose our blessings that God has planned for us, you know. And just because we didn't trust him because we were too impatient to wait for him to provide provide what we needed, you know, because maybe sometimes the things that we want aren't what we need, you know. So, so maybe you might ask God, hey, I want this. And, and God might say no. He might say yes. Or he might say, hey, just wait. Just wait. But, you know, sometimes we get greedy and we just we want it now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so if you say, okay. For example, you know, you say, okay, instead of going to church and finding a good woman there at church, you know, you say, ah, I've tried that. Um, I can't find a woman. So I'm, I'm going to go to the nightclub and, and I'm going to find a woman. I'm going to go to the bars and find a woman, you know, where, where there's fornication and, and drugs and alcohol. And, and God's going to say, well, why didn't you just wait? I had, a, I had a good woman lined up for you, but if you had just waited... And did things my way, followed the commandments I would have given to you, but instead you try to take matters into your own hands. And, and, and instead what happens is we, we when, it, when it all gets screwed up, okay, instead of, blaming, uh, instead of blaming ourselves and saying, I should have just waited for God. I should have just kept following the commandments, you know. We screw it all up. We didn't go to the right process. We went to the, excuse me, went to the clubs instead of the church to find a woman, you know. And we get angry at God and say, God, if if you would have just given to me what I asked for, I wouldn't have had to go out and commit all those sins. And it's like, what are you blaming God? Like, you should have just followed the commandments, not committed any sin, and just waited and been patient. You know, and maybe God wasn't going to give it to you. You should have just said, okay, well, if God didn't give it to me, he must have had a good reason. You know, because God loves us. He wants us. He wants what's good for us. He knows what's best for us. He knows what we need. And sometimes what we want is not what we need. Okay, so how do I wrap this up? Basically, I want to say this, you know, how do you define success? You know, you, you, you need to define that for yourself and say, hey, why do I think this is a success? What's my, wh why do I think um, this is important to, to strive for? And to work for, you know, and that's what I'm saying, you know, that I'm encouraging you to go to this book, go to the Bible, you know, Joshua chapter one, verse, verse eight says, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. For then, if you do these things and, and you observe all that is according and written in this book, 
Then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and have good success. It's your compass. That's what's going to make you successful. You know, you could be working at McDonald's. Who cares? You may not even be in good health. You may not have the best looking body. The You know, you may not be the smartest person. You may not know um, mathematics and science and history. So what? As long as you're doing God's will, you're following the commandments, you're not lying to anybody, you're not cheating people, that's how you be successful. That's what defines success. Whether you're married or unmarried. Because what 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 is marriage anyway? You know? Marriage for a man, the whole purpose of it is to just um show a picture. Be like um what's the word? Um uh, not a symbol, but like uh I can't think of the word. Anyway, marriage is just like um it's supposed to picture or be a symbol or a representation of God. Right? You have a husband and a wife. The husband's supposed to protect and provide for his wife. And the wife is supposed to be obedient, loving, and, and submissive to her husband. You know? These are what a successful marriage is. Because they picture God. They show God's grace and love and kindness and mercy in that dynamic. But you can also be a successful single man the same way. You just obey the commandments of God and you picture Jesus Christ. You picture you're, you are a living symbol of God. Whether you're single or married, you can do the same. You, your duty is the same. To be successful, you follow the commandments. You, 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 thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not lust after thy neighbor's wife. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt, you, know, you follow these commandments whether you're single or married. That's how you become a success. It's not the fact that you're married that makes you success. Or unmarried. Either way. The whole point is to be a success by following the commandments. That's what I'm saying. You know? Whether whether you made a lot of money, got a career, got an education, it doesn't matter. If you didn't follow the commandments, you're a failure. You're a failure in God's eyes. So, how do I wrap this up? Um, basically I'm, I'm here to tell you guys, Hey, look, you know, I know I'm not the best example, but this channel here is, is to show you guys, Hey, you don't have to be rich. You don't have to be famous. You don't have to be, um, the best, uh, strongest, most healthiest person. You don't have to be the smartest to be a success. You don't have to be married. To be a success. You know, I want you guys to look at my life and say, Hey, look, this guy follows the commandments. He's good to people. He, he treats people fairly and honestly. And, and his word is his bond. When he tells a, a woman, Hey, I'm going to take care of you. He means it. You know? And, and, and I want you guys to see that, Hey, that's a successful man. Somebody who follows the commandments. That's a success. That's what I want to go for. Because you can go out there and you can look at all the all, all the people who, who have all the money and all the fame and all um, everything you know that the world has to offer. And you can think that that's a success and you can go chase after that. And, and, and you can be the judge. But um, I guess um, question on what you think a success really is and why you think it. And uh, there's my perspective. There's my video. Let me um, close with um, the word of the Lord. I'll let him have the last word, uh, Joshua chapter 9, and I'll, and I'll see you guys soon. I have another video lined up that um, I'm going to try to get out pretty soon for you guys because the Lord, he's teaching me so much. He's so good. Um, but anyway, you guys have a good one. Joshua chapter 1, verses 9. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Amen.